I'm Sarah. Have you ever been working on a quilt and you cut everything perfectly square, your batting, your backing, everything goes together and it should be the right size. But by the time you get to the end of the seam when you start quilting, you find that things are a little bit off. And it's because your fabrics just kind of shift as you're sewing. It's so frustrating because now you've got to trim your quilt or square it up and you may go from a square to a rectangle or cut off a triangle point. So one of the ways that you can fix this is by using a walking foot. What happens as you sew is you've got feed dogs on the underside of your fabric and they're moving along the bottom, pulling that fabric front to back, but your foot just lays there and doesn't pull the top layer through. So that's where a walking foot comes in handy. There are lots of kinds of walking feet, but if you happen to be lucky enough to have a digital dual feed, you have the very best walking foot there is. What's nice about about this walking foot is it's got like a little conveyor belt on it that's going to move that fabric from the top at the same time it's moving from the bottom and it never loses contact with your fabric. Now it takes a minute to attach it. You're going to take that ankle right off of your sewing machine and screw on the digital dual feed and it's electronic so it also plugs right into the back of the machine. Once you've got that attached now you're ready to stitch your layers together and you can be pretty certain that your fabric layers are going to stay together at the same place that they started off at and all of your squares will be square. So we'll take a peek here. So just like that, I do have a nice even seam and everything lays together really nicely. None of my edges are shooting out in front of the others. Now you're not just stuck with stitching down the side. It'll be perfect if you go right down the middle of the fabric or in any direction as well. So we'll feed it on through. And once again, no shifting, no puckering, and you can go in the opposite direction too. In fact, I'm gonna sew right into my seams, which is the time where a lot of times you do get a pucker. And no problem whatsoever. So it's fantastic for all types of sewing. But once you get that digital dual feed on, you don't want to take it off. So one of the great things is that there are several different soles that you can use as well for it. So say a quarter inch. You can use your digital dual feed for piecing your quilts together and still have that perfect quarter inch seam. And it's even got a guide on it, the quarter inch sole. So I can stitch my two pieces together and it gives me a little flange to run the edge of those fabrics up against so that I can be sure to have that perfect quarter inch seam. There we go. So again, perfectly fed and nothing has shifted. You can also use this for applique stitching. So if you like to do applique type quilting, there's also an open toe sole. And I really love this because it's got a great big opening right in the center of it. So I can choose a lot of my quilting stitches and do nice applique as well. And so with this particular foot, I can see exactly where that needle's dropping as I stitch. So I'm stitching with the spine of that blanket stitch right on the edge of my fabric, and then it's just barely biting into the body of my block. Just like that, you've got a blanket stitch all the way around the edges. It holds everything nice and straight. Now, another great accessory is your stitch in the ditch sole. So this snaps right on and there's a little flange right at the center needle position. And this is there to help you with stitch in the ditch quilting. Now, if you're working on a big project like this, you absolutely want to be utilizing that walking foot or digital dual feed. So to have this stitch in the ditch attachment makes this job even easier. A lot of people think that stitching in the ditch is a beginner level technique, but it's actually kind of tricky. But with that guide, I can run that flange right inside the ditch between all of these little squares and I can know that my needle is following and landing right in the groove. Stop and do a little pivot there. And with that electronic digital dual feed that's just flowing right along that top edge of my fabric. I know that when I get to the end of the seam, nothing will have shifted, everything will still be nice and straight. Now I use straight pins to keep all of my layers together. You can always use safety pins or a spray base. Just make sure that as you approach those pins that you pull them out so that you never sew over one. So 
there we have beautiful stitching in the ditch. And if you weren't familiar with that term, that means that you're literally going right in the seam of your pieces. And having a guide on the foot makes it so easy. Another option for quilting with your digital dual feed is a quilting guide bar. So I'm gonna take that stitch in the ditch sole off and just put on the standard sole. There we go. And this is the quilting guide bar. You can adjust this for any distance of quilting that you want. And it's got this little attachment that sits right on the back of the digital dual feed. Now you can adjust that guide bar and move it side to side. I've got it set up so that I can kind of run that guide bar right on my ditch from my blocks and be stitching right about the center of those blocks. And again, I'm just gonna make sure I pull those pins out as I approach. So there we have a nice straight row of stitching, exactly centered between my two seams and my blocks. And now all I've got to do is start back up at the top again and just reposition on the next row of blocks over. So now I've got two rows of perfectly spaced quilting and I can just continue on and finish my quilt. You get the idea. So again, if you've ever had any problems with your layers shifting, maybe it's just that you need to use the right attachments and the right tools for the job. Now that you know what to do, get out there and put your best foot forward.